Hello and welcome to episode 110 of our SAP on Azure video podcast. Today is September 16th and together with Robert and Goran, we're here to talk about anything related to SAP and Microsoft. Hello, everyone. Hi. So today we are going to talk about a really cool new feature that we recently introduced into Azure. Um, when you deploy a virtual machine today on Azure, you can use a CLI, a command line interface or APIs, the, the portal or something like that. After that, Azure knows obviously that there is a virtual machine. You can start it, you can stop it, integrate it in monitoring and so on. Similarly, you can configure networking, storage, load balancer and, and much, much more Azure resources. This is obviously also the foundation for installing an SAP system, but it's all up to you to do this. With this new solution that we want to talk about today, the Azure Center for SAP Solution, um, customers can do a lot of new things. They can deploy an SAP system with a few clicks or API calls. They can also start and stop a whole SAP system. So basically, now Azure does not only know what a virtual machine is, but it also knows what an SAP system is. All of this opens so many new opportunities, and I'm really happy to have Aaron Stern joining us today and to talk about this new solution. But as always, before we hand over to Aaron, let's take a quick look at some of the news from this week. And actually, oops, let me start with um, a blog post from SAP. Um, so we, we have talked about the integration between SAP systems and, and Microsoft Teams for quite some time. And here, um, some colleagues from, from SAP are talking about their um, integration stories with Siemens, how they used um, an SAP system and integrated um, this into uh, Teams. And um, basically, they, they took a very interesting approach um, because they are, they are not connecting directly the SAP system into Teams, but they're using an SAP BTP service. So basically they're calling this the bridge framework that allows you to simplify the integration of your SAP uh, line of businesses into um, your, your Teams client. And there's, a, there's an architecture here, a high level architecture, like what are the components involved? So obviously you have the connectivity services, you have event mesh for the eventing scenarios, and you have this bridge framework, which basically um, contains some, some integration services. And then obviously on the Azure side, we have the, the main components like Azure Active Directory. We have the bot framework to, to, for the bot registrations and, and a cool few other things. Now, what I, what I like about this framework is that it uh, really brings um, a lot of functionalities that you need to solve anyways. I mean, you need to figure out some of the things if you want to integrate your SAP system into, into Teams. And a lot of these things are bundled um, within BTP now. Actually, there's also a follow-up blog post that talks in more detail about this integration framework. And there um, they um, go into more details like what is, uh, yeah, no, where is it? Hmm, maybe I, I missed this, but they, they go a little deeper in what are the services like the integration suite, the Microsoft, uh, the SAP graph, sorry, the destination services that make up this bridge framework. There are also um, further links like where's the, the documentation, how to get started, how you can actually use this um, bridge framework. So I thought uh, this is a pretty cool scenario that allows you to uh, integrate or one way to integrate your SAP services uh, into Teams. So with this um, very user interface uh, driven end user related scenario, um, Goran, you also brought up some, some other topics that are, I think a little more low level, a little more um, infrastructure. Uh, no, I, I would call it more back to the real stuff. Ah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a joke. That's always a fight between the backing guide and the that <laughs> guys, right? <laughs> um, Here's one very interesting update that uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, for the HANA, basically you can use for the HANA shared disks, um, um, Azure files for NFS. So here is an example was um, uh, for this HANA scale out. And typically in the past initially was uh, Azure Neta basically used. So just imagine when you go across the zone, basically you would need a two NFS account and it's, <clears throat> yeah, 
that was the way to do it. Now, uh, a, a small but actually important part that you can also use for the HANA share the Azure files for NFS, which is basically also a Zona one, for example. And uh, it, it is a simple and cost effective solution. So, um, I mean, small, small, how would say, um, a small a small step uh, for the humanity, but big for the <laughs> for the simplification. Let's say, yeah. So cool. if you go, we can go to the next one. Yeah, that that's an uh, from Jitendra, an interesting uh, basically blog. It talks about it. There is a business process pl platform also called Signavio, which is uh, kind of already integrated with the solution manager and basically used from, from a many SAP customer. And here is an interesting scenario and how, uh, if you go a little bit to the next picture, is basically how to integrate an uh, SAP Solman, which is running into Azure with the Signavio som somewhere else, and how to make it in a secure way. So here there are components basically like Azure Application Gateway and Azure Firewall basically use and then kind of step by step uh, approach how how to uh, how to configure it. So typically not not these kind of scenarios are not always described in the <clears throat> documentation, but we covered them also in the blog. So I mean very very useful. Uh, yeah, just a very useful blog. That's really cool because I actually think Signavio is picking up quite a lot. Um, I mean, Signavio I think has some some really cool functionalities um, to really optimize the business processes within an SAP system and right. then yeah. using this architecture that looks really interesting. Cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if you go to the next one, basically it's again uh, the real stuff, the <laughs> the HA topic. Um, if you co can go a little bit up. Um, uh, exactly the blog from the Robert Bureau. Um, the, the the story is the following. So, I mean, customer who runs high availability on Pacemaker, um, they can configure both either SLES or Red Hat uh, to use Azure facing, fencing agent. So fencing mm -hmm. agent is something that can reboot the another VM and make sure that kind of there is no split brain functionality. And through the fencing agent, um, through the uh, basically Azure integration, it's kind of Azure is used to trigger the, the reboot of another VM, right? Now, initially, um, in a service principle was used um, to configure actually, which is mean username and password to co configure that uh, kind of the old, the old stuff. Uh, which is not, I mean, uh, super practical because those uh, you need to store that kind of security information you need, they will expire. Now, the new new tendency is basically um, uh, to, to the use manage identities. Mm -hmm. And so this is a new, uh, another way how to do manage identities. You don't need a, it's a password less. And uh, this is a new way how to do it in a, in a uh, which is document in the Azure documentation. This blog is basically just describing how to switch an existing an HS SAP system from a, uh, from a service principle to the managed identities. Oh, no, cool. not not how to configure the new one, but basically to switch it. So in that way, everything is more secure. It's easier easier to manage it for the existing system. So basically, just um, Simplify it, make it more secure of the existing um, configured Linux-based pacemaker-based HS systems. Oh, really cool. And and uh, Robert did it in uh, as always. I mean, really in a very <clears throat> nice way. I mean, I was just going to say a, a very yeah. high quality blog post again yes, from Robert. Absolutely, Blank. absolutely. Yeah. Great, fantastic. Thank you. So so the next link. Um, that I have prepared is actually already um, about the Azure Center for SAP Solution. But instead of going through uh, this um, uh, documentation here, let's actually um, hand over to, to our special guest today. So maybe Aaron, um, can you quickly introduce yourself, what you're doing at, at, at Microsoft? And then, yeah, I think all of us are really excited to, to hear about ACSS. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for having me on the on this uh, on the call. I mean, it's a it's a really exciting to be here. Um, so, uh, uh, Aaron Stern, I went and uh, um, 
uh, uh, product manager uh, on Microsoft. I've actually been at Microsoft for for a few years. Uh, you know, for those that that, that know me, uh, an interesting history. <laughs> yeah, interesting history there. Um, I actually worked for Holger for quite for quite a, for way back in the way for a uh, while on some of the integration stuff before moving over to uh, to Azure, where now specifically, as I mentioned, product manager for uh, Azure Center for SAP Solutions is really my focus today, and, and what I'm want to, which I'm excited to to talk about. Cool. Well, it's really yeah. great to have you, Aaron. Yeah. And then, and part, and part, and I should, I should mention that part of that before that, where the, where I used to work with Holger in is I was part of actually our internal group within Microsoft that we actually ran our SAP systems, and so that's where I think I, where I think we when we first met. Yes, yes, and, and and I think actually one of the the really cool things, and and we had colleagues like Hans Reuter on on the show in the past, and some other um, colleagues um, from the um, Microsoft IT team or whatever the the name was at that specific <laughs> time. And we discussed it several times. It's always fascinating to to get their perspective and then to get their requirements and then to to see to to optimize SAP on Azure. And in your case, actually, I mean, you 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 did this on the customer side, so on the Microsoft IT side. But now you switch roles to really push your ideas forward and and yeah, put them into a product like in our case here, the Azure Center for SAP Solutions. Yeah. That's really cool. So what is yeah, it? So, yeah. So yeah, like you know, wh what is it? I mean, so really, I mean, like, let's just jump right in, right? Um. So when we talk about Azure Center for kind of SAP solutions, right? It is really it's a new experience available, you know, in the Azure portal, and it really is it provides a place for uh, um, partners and kind of customers uh, to go, and it's an end-to-end -end kind of unified. Uh, experience for deploying and managing your SAP systems on on Azure, and the uh, and really the way we think kind of think about this is that you know really it's about uh, how you know to be able to make it easier to deploy your SAP systems you know in terms of this guided deployment e experience and, and and what this is you know we basically look at kind of all so all the kind of best practices and um, Kind of the latest grace of technology, such as such as you know uh, um, Azure Files. Uh, you know, people are maybe familiar with like kind of some of the the WAF frameworks and some of the uh, and some of the other uh, like you know the 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 blog posts and stuff we're talking about there. So is what we do is we we take all the stuff latest and grace and we kind of uh, go and make it really easy to deploy an SAP system. Now the the great thing about it is that. Um, is that why you do why we do this and then kind of we kind of think about this making a little bit more uh you know you're a little more kind of paths like ish or in the fact in the sense of that is that you get you're deploying the entire sap system is the the fact is that you still retain that flexibility under of the underlying infrastructure right you still have access to it which is really kind of it's really cool so it makes it really easy to deploy the entire sap system but you can still go and have access to the underlying uh, virtual machines. And it is a portal-based experience, but of course, as an Azure service, you have access to things like CLIs and APIs like you like you always would. We also, and yeah. Maybe before you go to the, to the next thing, I, I think you cannot highlight enough how super cool this um, guided SAP deployment experience is, because if, if you install an SAP system, um, and if you are doing this on Azure, maybe for the first time, but even I would say if you do it for the hundredth time or something like that, I mean, one of the key prerequisites is you need to read some documentation. I mean, you need, if you do it for the very first time, you need to understand that there's a concept of certified virtual machines um, that you need. You need to know that there's a certain concept of how to configure the disk layout, um, how to do the networking architecture, how to set up all these things. I mean, it's not magic, but, but, you need to be you need to know something and we had colleagues from the azure lending zone um with us where, where we where we try to help really help customers with a guided experience that they can read through and and get some some checklists and stuff like that but still there's a lot of manual work involved if you want to automate this then so far you had to create your own scripts you had to do a lot of research and, and do it and then what i find also very important you did this once and then typically you would never really adjust it or something like that. You would never optimize it. And and Robert is one of the the biggest um, 
supporters or of saying, look, if you do something in the cloud, it's not a one time thing, but you really need to optimize and and have this cloud experience, this cloud mindset. It, it's it's very different to run an SAP system on premise to running an SAP system in the cloud. And with this deployment guide, and, and uh, hopefully we will see a little more of this um, later on, um, we really help customers to quickly get started to set up an SAP system in a recommended way. So a really a productive ready system. I can run my productive SAP system um, or workload on these deployed systems here. Yeah, I mean, what we like to go and say is really is that, you know, rather than going in, you know, sometimes it can take days, like lots of planning and stuff to get, you know, get us up, as you said, lots of documentation they have to read through and things like that. And now with this few, you few clicks, really, it just, it, it can take a matter of, you know, minutes or hours, uh, you know, depending on, uh, you know, the, the system you're trying to deploy. So really just really simplified it. Uh, uh, to, it made it just a lot easier uh, to go and deploy deploy an SAP system. Really cool. And and so the um, and the thing is is that you know we know customers have lots of customers running uh, SAP systems already in Azure, right? I mean I mean so that's the thing. It's like you know the the deployment is is important, but it tends to be a one one time activity. Yes. Right. And so that's I mean that's one of the things. It's like uh, you know you do it, but then once you have the system in Azure. You're going and run like you run it, you know, yep. you know constantly. I think our you know the basis people and infrastructure people will know you know know that you know you know day in and day out you know going in uh, and uh, you know really you know, managing the system and you know making sure it runs optimally. And so, and you know, we, and there's tons of customers that are already running their SAP systems in the uh, in the cloud in, in Azure, including. Microsoft. I mean, yep. Microsoft runs SAP. So that's why it's really important that this is not just an experience for for uh, new SAP systems, but we have this ability to go and register existing SAP systems that are already running on Azure. And what, by re by registering those existing SAP systems, you you go and get uh, this, the uh, additional management capabilities that I'll talk about a little bit more in details. Um, so, and and you get this allows you to now manage the your environment as an SAP system itself, rather than like just just virtual machines or underlying individual components. It's it you get this holistic approach, such as being able to start stop your SAP system. Or one of the really cool features is you know these these quality checks. What happens is the fact that we now know these virtual machines are running SAP. We can give you tailored uh, guidance uh, based off of the type of SAP system you're running, and, and continue to go and over time uh, be able to go and actually provide updated recommendations as things change. And I think that this is another super important thing um, because let's say, as you said, there are already a lot of customers that have their SAP system running on Azure. So on on first sight, you could say, well, then ACSS is not relevant for me because it's Deployment and yes, deployment is a very important piece, but that's only one piece. And the, yeah. the the thing is, even if a customer or a partner says, "Well, I, I have my deployment framework and it's perfect, and I, and I, I don't need um, support from from SAP, from from Microsoft for this," then that's also fine. But they can register their system, and then they can benefit from these functionalities like the quality check tool. And um, a few episodes ago, we also had um, Philip Leitenbacher um, with us who, who talked about a very early version of the uh, quality check tool. And I think now all of this is coming together. And I mean, starting and stopping an SAP system might not be a super complicated thing. But now, as you said, now Azure knows that this is an SAP system. And now I can just say, stop this HR system or start this finance system or whatever that I have in my environment. And I don't need to care about starting the database first and then starting the different application service and making sure that everything runs. This is all done automatically then um, by ACSS. So I think that's that's another amazing functionality that we're introducing here. And that's why we would consider this actually, you know, like bringing me to the third pillar is this is really this foundation of, of innovation because the fact is that everything we do is also exposed through APIs. So you can totally integrate this with your solutions and extend it. The also, 
what we'll do is we'll continue to evolve the service as new things come out. I mean, we already just talked about it, and I think on you know today about some new capabilities. And I'm sure in past channels, you guys continue on this on this on this cast talking about all these new things that come out, right? So the great so the whole great thing about ACSS is that you know we will take those thing, the the those new experiences, the new latest greatest features and capabilities, and and integrate them into the into the solution on behalf of the customers. Now this now this whole thing now this again is modular and extensible, so you don't have to do use this to be clear. Like you can use some of the features, you can use none of the features, you can continue to use do things as you do today, or you can go and you know you know register this register the system and take advantage of these kind of new capabilities really it's up to you so, so now be, before we uh i mean i'll probably ask this question in the end anyways but then now i can already do how much does it cost <laughs> uh -huh. well yeah so i mean what we're doing is is that there's no additional costs at, at this time i mean what you do is when is now obviously if you deploy a system uh, with uh, of course, with this, you have to pay for the infrastructure, right? But yes, we're not going and you know during this you know during this preview period and stuff. Um, you know, right now is that you get all these functionalities with no additional cost. Just the just the uh, just whatever you end up using <laughs> under the covers. Cool. Um, so you know. One thing that's look, we kind of mentioned it, but I want well, a point I really want to drive home that I think is really important is that you have many choices how to deploy an SAP system onto the cloud, right? I mean, I think it's I think that's I can't overemphasize that enough, right? Which is the fact is that um, you know there's there's the open source SAP deployment automation framework SDAF yep. that uh, that people people are familiar with, um, and you know you may have your own automation solution or a partner's automation solution. Or you can use our uh, deployment ex uh, deployment experience. However, you choose to go and deploy an SAP system. If you use if you use our experience, we'll create this logical representation of your SAP system called a a, uh, a virtual instance for SAP solutions. Or if you have an existing SAP system, uh, or you know using a partner solution, you can register those systems as a virtual instance. And now you get this logical representation of your SAP system within Azure that you can interact with and unlock the additional management capabilities. So this is really at the core. This is like, this is the, I don't know what you call it, the, the, the glue, the magic, right? Yes. This, this whole, this, this VIS. And I think Amazing. the... the do, do you have the slides with this virtual instance structure for, you know, I know exactly, yeah. Yeah. And so basically, the, 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 virtual instances. I was, I was, I was patient till this slide. <laughs> <laughs> so because this is, I think this is, the, this is the problem. Aaron, you mentioned uh, here what what is actually story about behind it, and that slide. But this is, I think, what what Helga mentioned is, he mentioned that it's uh, it's different if you are treating SAP in the cloud. But you know, the, from SAP basis perspective, it's same. Yeah. But if you somehow go inside the cloud and following our best practices, and this tool will help you to follow our best practices, then you can experience cloud in a completely different way, still handling the maybe monolith SAP landscape, but with this tool and this virtual instance for SAP, what we implement in the core of, uh, let's say, Azure API is one huge benefit. Uh, so now you can talk about what is that exactly? <laughs> No, but uh, exactly, and I think the, the fascinating thing is that we are not saying you have to start by <laughs> deploying an SAP system via ACSS. If you said, like like what you said, Aaron, there, there are these multiple entry points. You can use the SDAF, the SAP Deployment Automation Framework that is available on GitHub. So you can download it, you can modify it, you can enhance it. And we see partners doing this actually, right? They, they are yep. adopting... Um, these scripts to their specific needs. So that's perfectly fine. They can continue to do this. Then they can register the system. Obviously, there are APIs, as you said, um, to do the registration. And then they can continue to experience the or to benefit from the experiences that are a part of ACSS so that next time they stop and start an SAP system, they can do this via the APIs from the virtual instance for SAP solutions. They can have the Azure monitoring integration, the, the, the check tool integration, all these other things that you already hinted at. 
so so i think that's for me this this really cool thing that we are extreme we are, we are providing customers a new opportunity a new option to um yeah first of all make like what, what's written here azure sap aware so now it's not just any virtual machine on and on this virtual machine could run some custom code or some database or application. Now we know, no, this is an SAP system. And we know the different components that make up this SAP system. And that's a huge different. And yeah. I, I'm really looking forward to. Uh, oh, there. You, yeah. You're always more like you're so you're so excited. You're 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 actually stealing my tagline there. Yeah, I mean, sorry, great thing I'll about shut up. The, stealing the show. <laughs> no, it, no I, it's fantastic. I think we should take over here, Aaron, and you just yeah, but, and we'll yeah you can go off, Aaron. Aaron. <laughs> yeah, no, you guys don't need me. I mean, you, but you, you know, guys, Aaron, you, this like, is very guys, strange. I need, because in now most, I in need most to cases, say what I like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in most cases, uh, Holger is always, you know, uh, bring his excitement when we are talking about Power Platform. But now we are talking yeah, yeah. about infrastructure <laughs> yeah, too, and I this mean, is amazing. You know, this story, is... Yeah. Well, earlier you're talking about the being, a, you know, kind of the back end versus the, you know, the front, the kind of front end app guy. And look at that, the, the app yeah, guy yeah, yeah, you see. is being excited <laughs> about what the underlying infrastructure. Here, you know? But for me, you know, you have the left part, which in SAP solution and the right side you have infrastructure and you have a link in between them and that link is actually a context this yeah. instance is yeah. running on that virtual machine and this kind of awareness is great because everybody who, who works in the cloud and you have just the vms you have no idea where is what and when you need to figure it out and troubleshoot you, you are lost where is what you know and just this making a context and awareness, not just the SAP instance, but how it is linked to underlying Azure infrastructure, it's a huge help. It's really a huge help for everybody. Yeah, yeah because this this is standard story about um, control plane. You know, when we are talking about networking infrastructure, infrastructure as a service, this is somehow control plane. And we are somehow switching in data plane when we are talking about how computer network, how to configure SAP systems. And now we are, have a bridge where our APIs understand not just this uh, um, control plane, they understand also from, from SAP perspective, how SAP system is structured inside mm -hmm. that control plane. So now we have more information about SAP system itself in our native APIs, which means everything what we implement in the future will be uh, will be in the native APIs from our side, this virtual instance for SAP solution. And I think this amazing benefit for, for partners for for any any partners who want to extend this solution to to modify this solution to include in the existing uh, partner solution this is a huge benefit for that from that perspective and what i like what we've heard from customers and and so i i've started going and thinking almost of this about being almost like a little bit of a, a rosetta stone and and you may ask what is that well i mean in the sense of fact is that you a lot of times you have people that know the infrastructure and you have people that know the SAP layer um, and sometimes the same people, but a lot of times they're not. And what we've heard over and over from customers is this is great because now this provides this translation, as you just were exactly. pointing out there, between the mm -hmm. infrastructure and the SAP layer. So now the infrastructure people can think about this in the way they're familiar with it. And the SAP people can think, the basis people can think about there and it exactly. helps translate those and two just different that, because, people. Because, you know, we are in general, for example, in Cloud Adoption Framework, we all already discussed about that in our uh, in our shows. That that there's a, this concept of switch responsibilities, and so there's a, probably SAP basis guys will have more responsibility inside the cloud, and Azure Center for SAP is a very good example how to how to deal the, with that uh, switching of responsibility because I'm not just SAP basis guys now I can also do something in infrastructure directly I don't need to wait someone to build that for me I can do that by myself and combine infrastructure information with my SAP information and to monitor my systems. And we'll probably talk about that also later. I mean, this, yeah. this is amazing combination of, of, of huge experience for one side and huge experience from other side. Yep. Cool. Yeah, so I mean, like, let's let's d dive a little bit deeper, right? I mean, because yep. as we said, the VIS, so the Virtual Instance for SAP Solution, becomes the foundation. Now, what do we do with that? Like, you know, so we have fantastic, you know, tools and frameworks today. I mean, you talked a little bit about WAF. We, you know, we talked about the the qual open source quality check framework that you know Holger mentioned that was already featured, uh, you know, on a previous uh, podcast. Um, 
and those are those are those are fantastic uh, uh, frameworks and tools that exist today. Uh, and then we have a you know you know open source deployment automation framework which we discussed. We have uh, AMS or that Azure Monitor for SAP solutions was al already featured on, on this cast uh, previously. I know that you know then you know we have like Azure Backup. You know, for you know, it lets you back up your virtual machines. It lets you back up your HANA database. Um, you have features like you know, built in the Azure portal around cost management, um, and you know, Microsoft Sentinel. You know, you know, uh, which has actually has an SAP uh, component to now, so you can do threat detection on your SAP systems. Right, all these things exist today, um, and you you can use them on their own. But what's great is that with VIS, we now have this contextual integration. Starting with uh, with AMS, uh, and and then so now you can actually go from your VIS, be able to nav you know get additional details about your system through the fantastic monitoring product, um, and we also have that with uh, the cost analysis. Is something actually we just launched. Um, I don't think we I don't I don't think we've blogged about it or done anything like that. So I think this is actually the first time publicly where we're, we'll be uh, talking about it. And hopefully we'll have some time for me to go and show what that looks like. Um, but yeah, we also integrated with that. And so and you can see that on the slide, you know, there's other things we're working, you know, working on backup and Sentinel. And so, you know, our vision really is with VIS as the foundation to provide this contextual integration with other Azure services um, so that way, you know, you kind of get the best of both worlds. And you know what? Actually, for me, that's one of the most important functionalities of ACSS. I mean, don't get me wrong. Deployment is fantastic. Registration is is, is great. Quality check tools. But this this information that now we we can expose the information of an SAP system, not not a virtual machine or not a storage, but really an SAP system to other services in Azure. Like what you said, um, Azure Monitor, Azure Backup, that will simplify the um, usage of these other Azure services in a in a fantastic way. And for for me, this is the starting point. Um, as you said, th th this this list is is already now growing and growing. I mean, what what you said about Azure Cost Center, um, the the billing integration stuff like that. That that is one thing. But for me, this is really just the the, the starting point. With with this. Nucleus or Rosetta Stone. I actually really like that that idea. And uh, this Rosetta Stone of 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 Azure um, can really translate how all these different Azure services that we have can now connect to an SAP system. And they they don't need to know that there is a database or or, or that SAP has some special specialities. I would say all of this is translated by ACSS and, and really made um, transparent to these services. And and again, I I think. We're just getting started with these services, and, and now we know why the why the uh, why uh, Hogar is so excited about this, right? It's because the fact is now, as all these applications can easily integrate mm. with you know with SAP. Now the truth comes out. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Darren, There's you should come more here. often here. You know, <laughs> uh, I'm happy to be uh, on more often. So, um, would you guys like to see some of it? Yes, yes. please. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. just going to ask. Yep. All right. Let me switch. I guess I will uh, need to switch sharing here for a bit. So give me a second. Because I mean, while you do this, um, this is live. I mean, it's not GA yet, but every customer can use this today. So if you have a system running on SAP, um, yeah, you can call this. If you go to the Azure portal and you search for Azure Center for SAP Solutions, you will end up in this uh, at this page here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so that's in that's that you know, uh, that's a good point that, that this is a public preview, but it, and because of public preview is available to everyone to try out, you know, you know, today, you know, kind of in the portal, and the, I mean, so this is you know, kind of the starting um, uh, uh, page for Azure Center for SAP Solutions, and so uh, you know, so on here you can see how you can create an SAP system, you can register an SAP system, um, you know, we even have a link here for. Some of those other uh, um, frameworks and tools that we talked about, you can get a link to them because really, you know, this really is kind of the one-stop shop for SAP on Azure, or at least that's you know that's our our vision. And so we provide you know context you know with VIS, but also links to other uh, you know tools and frameworks like we we discussed. 
you have your VIS here. Um, and I'll talk about a little bit later about the quality insights. And the other kind of really cool thing that I just also, you know, want to kind of point out is like, you know, you know, a quick link to go and open up tickets in case you need uh need need help, right? I mean, you click on that and it will and and you can go and uh uh you know basically ask for help for our fantastic you know CSS team. Who and, needs to create a ticket? Come on, this is all self-explanatory. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean it's self-explanatory. That's no, no, that but you're true. right. It's great. Yep. Th th that but you're the, really uh, thinking this you know end to end. So every every once in a while, it's like okay. Hey, you know the uh, you, you may have a question or something about you know. Great. Why does it work this way? And this is you know makes it really easy to go and uh, open up a ticket there. But the, the point being is 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 what is really is really what it's trying is, is that it's that contextual integration is right. We're trying yes. to make your make everyone's lives easier because no one wants to open up it. You know, no one no one wants to spend time hunting all over the place for yeah. uh, for different things. So. Um, but let's take a look at you know the, the you know the VISs right so that we you know kind of discussed. So here um, is kind of an overview of of the VIS. You can see quite quickly that you, you know that I and right now I have these uh, four kind of SAP systems. You can kind of get a quick overview of their status uh, in terms of the health and if it's running. Um, the fact that we know these are for S4 HANA systems. So you know at a glance you get an overview of your entire SAP estate, which is, I think, pretty cool. And, you know, you, and, and what, what I want to actually show here real quick, just also, you know, just how easy it is to go and register in, in an existing SAP system. So I'm going to go and hope this will be, um, just give me a second here. So what you have to do, what I'm doing here is we make this process really easy. All you have to do is point us to your ASCS uh, virtual machine. So right now, Azure just knows that there's a virtual machine. It doesn't know yep. anything else about this virtual machine. It Do doesn't know anything else about it. And so obviously yeah. you have to, like you have to tell us what is your ASCS virtual machine. Mm -hmm. And then from that, um, you know, you give us, you know, we you give us SID uh, and, you know, I'll say, hey, this is a non-production system. And we can go ahead and register this. And this will take a little bit to run, so we'll come back to this a little bit later. But we'll at least kick this off, and we'll come but back I, a little I bit later. I saw that you selected S for HANA, but um, I can also register other systems there, right? Or does it Correct. only support S for HANA? Yeah, that's a good point. Yes, yeah, this is, happens to be an S for HANA system, um, but you can actually register uh, uh, any any type of system, uh, okay. ECC S for HANA is. Long as it, what today what we support is I should say ABOP systems, right? Netweaver mm -hmm. ABOP systems is what mm -hmm. we support today. Okay. And we do, and we and we also support something also that's brand new uh, that we just uh, recently uh, 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 launched is the ability to uh, register uh, Windows-based uh, SAP cool. systems. So, okay. I so tried. pretty much, it worked out of the box, including the cluster for central services. Oh, you tried already and it worked? I tried it and just worked. So the, the, in an in HA I, cluster? An HA cluster, of course, you know, what else? What else? Nothing else to expect from so you. That, yes. mean, that mean I can I, I can register a system with mix, mix so application server Windows and database Linux. I can do that now. Yeah, we uh, we, okay. we go and we do support the the uh, registration of of the Windows uh, based systems. Yeah, so you can go and just Windows um uh linux uh both are supported and holgar you see this wizard is very interesting you see this when you select this hr then every time when you select that goran you will lose job in, in microsoft <laughs> so we don't need goran anymore you know <laughs> you will follow me so we are okay yeah. <laughs> so real quick i'm gonna so why that's running i'm gonna quick you quickly go and just quickly uh, show you the uh, the deployment experience. So I just, in the interest of time, I've pre-filled out a bunch of different mm -hmm. values here. So, but you can see that you kind of pick the subscription, the resource group, you know, the, and again, so this is a, the, what I showed previously was registering existing SAP system. This is how you deploy Creating a new a SAP new system. Mm -hmm. And and so in this case, we call it, you know, you know, kind of YT1, you, you know, pick the type of system, 
Uh, in this case, I would just say distributed HA. So you basically just fill out a bunch, like a few pieces of information here. Um, and then kind of cool thing really I wanted to show is, you know, sometimes what happens is like, hey, you know what? What's what's the right size in my SAP system? And what we have now here is you can go in here and say, let's say I have, you know, a thousand SAPs, right? And let's say, because the fact that we're running an S4 HANA system and it's running HANA, which is an in-memory database, you know, let's say, you know, I know the fact that I need about a terabyte of memory, right? And so you can just click on generate recommendations and we'll pre-populate uh, what we would recommend for that deployment. Now you have the total ability to override this. Like you don't have mm -hmm. to go with our recommendations. This just gives you a starting point. If you have no, no idea, you, you, or you can just come in here and just directly enter uh, and I think you know, what the values. Is important to mention is that all what we offer here is certificate machine. So the customer does not need to worry to, okay, oh, is this right machine or not? So all those yep. machines which unlist are certificate for, for that. So yeah, and, and that's like, um, and so then when you see, like, let's say I click on like, see all sizes here, for example, mm -hmm. um, right? you end up having you know the kind of the m series right you don't you're not you're not you don't see a list of all you know virtual machines we see the ones that are uh that are certified and now mm -hmm. in this particular case because being a uh you know like an um uh, and then for non-production systems um we, we actually allow you know to deploy the uh, e series um not not suited for, for this for production deployments for the way that you know we're we're deploying it because we're using um uh, using premium disks rather than, uh, you know, ultra uh, SSD. But, you know, this is, it's, it's a fantastic for non-production testing purposes. Uh, yeah. You can go ahead and use the E-series for your HANA database. Cool, yeah. And so, yeah. And the other quick thing I'll show here is um, the fact that you can also go and see uh, kind of the disk layout that we're going to deploy. I think that is also a huge thing, actually, because it's, I mean, typically it's, it's not only the planning. OK, I need uh, like in this case four P15, for example, but also once I did this, I need to stripe them. I need to do a lot of configuration there. And that's all also done um, automatically for me um, yep. when I'm using this deployment. So that's really, really powerful. So let's take a quick look at some of the management capabilities, right? So. Um... So we can kind of go back over to the, you know, kind of the SAP solutions here. And so I have this existing system uh, that I've previously deployed that which is, and over here really quickly, you can go and see the fact that, you know, you, know, you can get this overview page. And if we click on uh, properties, you can get a quick rundown of your SAP system. We can see the fact that, you know, this has a couple app servers, a central instance, and this, a couple of virtual machines underlying that. You click up if you want to go and get a quick glance at your some of your infrastructure metrics. You can go to the monitoring tab, and so at a glance, think about if if you had to if you had to do this yourselves, like you'd yes. have to go and select all the underlying virtual machines yourselves. In this case, we now know all the virtual machines associated with your SAP system, all the application servers, for example. So we can automatically generate these these graphs, and it just it makes it easier. That, that's really, really fantastic. But actually, Aaron, before we go there, I mean, we are talking mm -hmm. about an SAP deployment. Um, and obviously, Microsoft is not allowed to ship um, SAP software. So what does this mean for from a customer perspective? Yeah, so from a customer perspective is what the cut the that we will help the customer install the SAP software, but the customer um, uh, will basically they download the software or they can run a run a kind of script they if they throw put it into a storage account and what they'll go you can go do is then uh point us to that where they basically downloaded the sap software and we will then go ahead and help install it onto the virtual machines that you've deployed with our solution so and, uh, just when, to, to to add to that because i think this is actually pretty cool again we as microsoft are not allowed to ship sap software so what we need to do is, or what the customer needs to do, they need to use their S user to connect to SAP to officially download the software. But actually, um, Morgan, I think, showed this um, several episodes ago um, that that we have the tools to help the customer to really download the requirement required software so that it is prepared, 
Um, and then the customer would put this on an Azure Blob store. I mean, um, secured obviously with access and stuff like that. And then we could use this downloaded software to automate the installation of the SAP system in this landscape on these virtual machines that we just selected on the storage that we have selected. So the, the experience is, is still extremely easy because there, there's only one step where I basically need to provide um, the, the credentials obviously to log on to the service marketplace and um, then the, the, the download of the software can actually also be automated more or less. Yeah, I mean, so you, so yeah, so basically, once you've already downloaded the the software and kind of put it into the to the storage account, um, and then yeah, and then you just basically point our uh, point us to that location, and yep. we'll go ahead and install the 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 software. Um, cool. So, um, yeah, and so then here, this is what we talked about earlier, kind of on the left, uh, kind of this left hand side, you kind of you get this. Um, you know, view of the different uh, different systems. Um, you can actually click into this, for example, and you can go and get metadata about your your your, your SAP mm -hmm. system, and you could even drill into the underlying virtual machine. So you can go straight from here. You know, this is that glue we were talking about, right? The fact that now, the fact that we you know can navigate from the database instance to the underlying virtual machines that is running uh, that uh, that database instance. We also show things like if I go back to like the application instances, for example, um, things like kernel information, right? So the fact that we know the kernel. So imagine the fact of that you're going and you know want to verify that you're running the right kernel across your entire SAP landscape. Right? We make it easier to uh, to do so. That's actually a super important point because and um, and we haven't talked about this because I think all of this is actually integrated in so, so that we can run custo queries to really um, retrieve this data that is now, yep. again, now Azure knows all these SAP parameters all of a sudden. So you as a customer can run queries to, as you said in your example, to, to really list me all the application kernel patches in my all my SAP systems in, that I've installed and registered in Azure. Yeah. And, and I actually have a demo of that, but I'm realizing we're actually running. We're running a, the. I, I don't know how much more time we have, Holger. I mean, yeah, you're actually right. Let Let's um try to maybe if you have a few more minutes and you, you can round off this 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 demo. But as Goran said, I I also think um it's obvious that we need to invite you again. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, it's great. So let's let's go ahead and I mean, let me just quickly check on the oops, sorry, that the cost analysis thing. Let me check on this. Oh, look. Did there? So let's 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 at least check to see if the uh the system is there. Um So now let me just go ahead and kind of refresh it and there you can go and see that we have the CS2 system that I we had just registered that didn't that did not exist uh, previously. Uh, and so the the other thing that's really cool, maybe I'll because you mentioned it, Holger, is I mean I'll show two quick things and I can always come back. Uh, is I want to go and show that query capability that you just talked about because I this is my oh, cool. favorite feature, right? So I have some example queries that I wrote, and so you notice how you saw. The, the the SAP system, the you know, C, this CHA uh, system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I can also query that and look, I now know I can just go and say, hey, show me all my VMs, in this case this is the VM so IDs cool. associated with the system. And then from that, you can get all the, you know, then you can expand this query even further to get like the details of the virtual machines. And so this is that link that we talked about between the SAP context now to the underlying infrastructure. Which also means if I'm a partner or if I'm a customer and uh, that that is already doing a lot of log analytics, maybe I'm retrieving information there and I'm querying, yeah, all different stuff. Now all, all of a sudden I not only have this information on list me all virtual machines that I have deployed in this and that region, but I can really drill down with the very same language, with the very same query language, and um, into my SAP system and correlate this data that I um, maybe have also from from other queries that I'm running in, in Azure. So I think th that that is really actually something really cool that we not only have the user interface experience, so in the portal I can click around and I get the data, but we have the APIs, the underlying APIs to retrieve really locking information like, like what you're showing here. 
Yeah, or in this case, this is Azure Resource Graph, which has the query capability. So if you're, if you're familiar with Custo, it's a Custo-like you know, language that lets you search across your entire uh, you know, SAP state. You can search across all your resources within Azure. And now because Azure is SAP aware, now yes. that we have this logical representation of the SAP system in Azure, it lets you search uh, in the context of your SAP systems. Uh, and so uh, I'll stop there in the interest of, of time, at least for this particular uh, demo. Um, but like the fact that we have data such as like like pr production, non-production, you can do things like that. So this is really a great way to extend the, the solution, especially for our kind of our pro users uh, out there. This is so great, Aaron. Uh, Hold yeah. on. Yes. Can I share my screen just shortly to show something? Yeah, sure. Because I think this will bring the little bit more point. So um, just to, to show uh, to, to show people what we are talking about. Yeah. So this is virtual machine. So I'm I'm in a REST API uh, documentation from our side, and it's just example how you actually can browse virtual machines using our APIs. Take a look. Mm -hmm. So this is structure, subscription, and you define the provider, and then you virtual machine. Now take a look down. This is the very important, yeah? SAP application server instances. So the same structure, but take a look what we are talking about here. We are talking about browsing over the APIs, SAP virtual instances. In this case, we are asking for application server instances list. So this is a power. So we are extending our APIs, what we already discussed, what you, Holger, also mentioned. And this is, this is so powerful, yeah? So that we are now can, in our API, browse it for SAP instances. Yeah, This is the power, and this is very cool. I agree. I agree. So yeah. Uh, I think I, we may, I mean, I didn't get to the cost analysis demo, but I may have to come back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's that's a given now. You 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 uh, created a beautiful teaser for 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 another episode. We will then dig into uh, the 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 other cool stuff of the uh, Azure Center for SAP Solutions. So Aaron, I think that was really really fantastic. Thank you so much for for taking your time. Um, thank you for for the first introduction into um, ACSS. I think this is really great and. I think, um, yeah, you clearly showed how important and uh, great it is to make Azure SAP aware. So thank you very much for that. I'm really looking forward to having you again on the show. Yeah, and one thing I, I want to mention before I leave is that we actually have this fantastic overview and demo videos. And so hopefully, ho hopefully, uh, Holger, that's something that you can link to. So that way, mm -hmm. uh, it, it will show, I show some things that you won't necessarily see in the demo, but this is, we have this great overview and this about seven minute demo, which I think you may have mentioned in the past, but I'm going to do another call out of it. Like it just gives you a quick overview of the entire system. So I encourage everyone to go to check that out and stay, and I would say stay tuned uh, and we'll be, you know, announcing some, you know, additional information here, uh, you know, in the upcoming uh, months. And I'll be excited to, as we go on our path to general availability, I'll be excited to come back and keep this uh, group updated with all the great progress. Super. Great. Thank right. you so much, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye, Bye everyone. All right. Bye.